If you would have to pick one country existing on this planet today, which would have the most in common with the Roman Empire or the Roman Republic, which country would you choose? Which country would be the spiritual successor of the Roman Empire? Could we even objectively find a country that would fulfill the criteria as to be considered a true successor to the Romans? Well, this will be interesting. So let's try to find out who the spiritual successor of the Roman Empire is. If we want to find the country on Earth that has the most characteristics of the Roman Empire or Republic, we of course first should be aware what these characteristics even are. What would be the most important attributes that we would identify as typically Roman? Well, let's look at a list of things that we would consider Roman and then let's think if we can find a country that would check the most boxes on this list. 1. The Romans were religiously tolerant. The Roman Republic and later the Roman Empire, at least until 382, looking at you Theodosius, was religiously surprisingly tolerant. Until Christianity rose to power and religiously intolerant Christian fanatics became more and more often emperors, who then outlawed other religions, the Roman Empire was in fact a melting pot of many different religions and belief systems. There were in fact so many different cults and other forms of worship that listing them all would take a long time. So even though the official form of worship sponsored by the emperors was either the imperial cult in which the emperors themselves would be deified upon their deaths, thus turned into godlike beings or of the traditional Greco-Roman pantheon of gods. There was even a large temple in Rome dedicated to the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Greco-Egyptian god Serapis and it really was a quite huge temple. This cult was already introduced in Rome in the 2nd century BC. Later there were many oriental cults, then the cult of Sol or Sol Invictus, the cult of Mitras and so many others. 2. The Romans loved grandiose architecture. If we have a look at Rome and some other Roman cities, one thing we immediately see is how utterly grandiose their cities looked. Rome in its prime was a spectacle unlike any other on earth. A city with hundreds of magnificent temples, with aqueducts towering dozens of meters above the ground. A city with many fountains, with gigantic arenas, with incredibly large racetracks. It must have been quite the sight to behold. So the modern day analogy to the Roman state must have impressive cities with grandiose architecture. 3. The Romans assimilated other nations. Despite the later problems that the Romans had with let's say mass immigration that got a little bit out of hand and led to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Despite that, for the longest time, the Romans welcomed new people into their growing republic and later empire. People that willingly joined the Romans, and there were quite a few who did that freely, would be assimilated and later became Romans themselves. But even the ones who refused would be made Romans if necessary by force. The Gallic natives, for example, even a few generations after Gaul had been conquered by Julius Caesar, had been so utterly Romanized that they saw themselves as Romans. The same applies, for instance, to the natives of Hispania or other parts of the empire. 4. The Roman Empire was a multicultural melting pot. If one would say, I am Roman, in the early days of the Republic, this would mean that he or she would be from Rome or the vicinity of Rome. Later, they would be from Italy. And then after 211 AD, all people who weren't slaves in the entire Roman Empire could rightfully call themselves Romans, no matter the ethnicity, the skin color or the ancestry. 5. The Romans had a powerful and expensive military. It is believed that the Roman military, in its zenith, was around half a million men strong and cost an insane amount of tax revenue. 
Some even think that the upkeep of the Roman army cost about half of the tax revenue of the entire Roman Empire. This would then lead to many problems about which I talked in this video here. So the spiritual successor of the Roman Empire would need to have a powerful and expensive military and the defense budget would need to be extraordinarily high. And now to something different, the SPQR shop. They make amazing rings, amazing pendants, attributes, terracottas, coin replicas. They make a lot of wonderful replicas of Roman items and it's all 100% handcrafted. Let me tell you, the level of craftsmanship is absolutely incredible. You can even buy the one and only Majorianus ring. And you can only get it on the SPQR shop. But there are of course many other rings and amazing items that the SPQR shop crafts with an incredible attention to detail. And with a code in the description, you will get a 20%, I repeat, a 20% price reduction on every purchase on the SPQR shop. So don't hesitate and buy something nice for you or someone else as a present who also happens to like Roman history. Thanks for your attention and back to the video. 6. The Romans were almost always engaged in wars somewhere. There was a temple in the Forum Romanum in Rome called the Temple of Janus. It was closed in times of peace but opened in times of war. Needless to say, it was most of the time open. The Romans fought wars on all sides against a multitude of different enemies at their borders and so the modern day successor of Rome would also need to be always engaged in wars somewhere. 7. The Romans had a propensity for civil wars. The downfall of the Romans was their propensity for civil wars. They were almost always engaged in them, which allowed the Germanic invaders to take advantage of the chaos and instability and this is ultimately the big reason why the Western Roman Empire fell. So the spiritual successor of the Roman Empire would need to have experienced at least one civil war in order to qualify. 8. The later Romans were extremely polarized. After the Roman Empire became Christianized and this religion was institutionalized, basically forcing everyone else to join lest they would face some serious negative consequences in everyday life, the Roman Empire became extremely polarized. On the one hand, there were the Christians, but on the other side, there were even around the year 400 AD still about 50% of the population of the Western Roman Empire followers of the old religions. This of course led to extreme polarization which, as you can imagine, was not so ideal for the Imperium Romanum. 9. The Romans were technologically very advanced, more advanced than most other empires or kingdoms at that time, save maybe for the Persian or Chinese empires. So the spiritual successor of Rome would also need to be technologically very advanced. 10. The Romans had the most powerful culture. Everybody wanted to be Roman. One reason why the Germanic invaders wanted to live inside the Roman Empire was that they actually admired the Romans and their culture. They marveled in disbelief at their impressive cities, at their beautiful statues and buildings and wanted to live like them. If necessary, by force. So the Romans projected the strongest culture, making others want to become Romans themselves. This is a quality which the spiritual successor would need to have. 11. The Romans loved oftentimes brutal entertainment. There were no brutal TV shows in the Roman Empire, but if they would have existed, I am sure the Romans would have loved them. Instead, the Romans had invented brutal games like gladiatorial fights or chariot races, where in both cases oftentimes people would die, especially during the gladiatorial fights. So the spiritual successor of the Romans would need to love fights and brutal entertainment in general. 12. The Romans had problems with their borders and with illegal mass immigration. The Roman border was very long, so incursions were after the 160s AD already a big problem, but it got really out of hand in the mid 200s AD 
and then even more so in the 370s and 400s AD. In 376 AD, the Goths had crossed over the Danube River, seeking refuge in the Eastern Roman Empire, and there was no wall to stop them. In the Western Roman Empire later, after 406 AD, despite walls and fortification systems, huge masses of Germanic tribes still had managed to cross into the Roman Empire illegally, as you might have guessed, and then wreaked havoc in the Roman Empire, which would later lead to the fall of the Western Roman Empire. So the spiritual successor of Rome would also need to have problems with their borders and with illegal mass immigration. 13. The Romans had problems with inflation. The Romans really had problems with inflation because they debased their money. In parts because, as I mentioned before, their military was so extremely expensive. So the emperors had to start to debase their currency, thus reducing the gold and silver content and thus creating inflation, to be able to upkeep the expensive army. Basically, the Romans tried to print their way out of their deficits. This of course created huge problems later on. So the spiritual successor of the Romans would need to also have problems with inflation. 14. The Romans had a democracy until they didn't. The fall of the Roman Republic is a fascinating chapter of Roman history. It lasted for about 500 years, until then in the 1st century BC it fell and gave way to the Roman Empire. So the spiritual successor of Rome should ideally be a late-stage democracy, or let's say, feel like a late-stage democracy. So these are 14 points that came to my mind when thinking about important characteristics of the Romans from the Republic and the Roman Empire. Now can we think of a country that would check the most items on that list? I know it's very difficult. Indeed, let's think about it. The USA is religiously tolerant. In general terms at least, sure you will probably find some places that are more so than others, but in general the US is quite religiously tolerant. Or let's say that the US will not force anyone to give up their faith, at least not to my knowledge. They also have cities with grandiose architecture. Washington DC for instance, we could even say, has been built with classical architecture in mind. There is even the Capitol Hill, named after the Capitoline Hill in Rome itself. The buildings exert might and classical architectural forms. Now does the US like to assimilate other nations if necessary by force? Luckily not anymore, but they used to. The Native Americans can certainly attest to that, as can the Mexicans, who lost huge territories to the US after the Mexican-US War of 1846-1848. Now are they multicultural? I think we don't even have to think too much about that, it's an absolute yes. You will find so many different nations and different peoples living within the US and calling themselves Americans, very similar to how it was in the Roman Empire. The next one is admittedly hilarious. Because of course the US has an extremely powerful and extremely expensive military. It is the most powerful military on earth and the most expensive one to maintain. The Romans would be proud. Now is the US often engaged in wars somewhere? Okay, that's again a very tough one, I know, a very difficult question. Unfortunately, like the Romans, the US finds itself engaged in far too many wars far too often. Now even though the US does luckily not have a propensity for civil wars anymore, they had one civil war and it was brutal. More Americans were killed in that one civil war from 1861 to 1865 than in all other wars combined. Insane. Now the same as in the later Roman Empire, the Americans are these days unfortunately very polarized. Instead of Christians versus pagans, we now have left versus right, or Democrats versus Republicans, whatever you want to call it. Now of course the Americans are also very technologically advanced. Now are they the most advanced? Well, that is a different topic because China has managed to become very advanced as well. In some metrics, 
even surpassing the US. However, taking all into account, the US is probably still leading ahead of China. The most innovative companies and products still come from the US. But the US also projects the most powerful culture. There is a reason why so many people want to go to America and become Americans, just like so many nations wanted to join the Romans and become Romans. The US has also an incredibly large entertainment industry, and American movies and other entertainment still gets exported to all around the world. Thus, they project the most powerful cultural impact of all nations on Earth. Now, do Americans love brutal entertainment? Luckily, there aren't gladiator arenas anymore, but there sure are things like UFC, which to me seems very gladiator-like. And they like races as well. And they sure do like unnecessarily violent TV shows. So that's also a clear check. Now, does the US have problems with border and illegal mass immigration? Many people flock into the US over the Mexican border, and this does remind us somewhat of the Goths crossing over the Danube in 376 AD. Luckily, I think there won't be a Battle of Adrianople type of event as a consequence, but it certainly does and will cause some societal problems. Especially because these people come in in extremely high numbers and are entering illegally. So like the Romans, the US has problems to keep outsiders from streaming into their territory in huge masses. Like in Roman times, the non-Romans wanted to become Romans. They admired Rome. And the strong American civilization and culture also makes many non-Americans want to become Americans. And does the US have problems with inflation and likes to solve their deficits by printing their way out of the problems? I think Jerome Powell has a word or two to say about this, doesn't he? After all, the Fed printed hilariously large amounts of money in early 2020. And as a consequence, this sharp increase in M2 money supply led to huge inflation. The old Romans would be proud. And last but not least, I think that many would observe that the US feels, in some certain aspects, like a late-stage democracy. So for me at least, and I think some might agree, if we were to pick a country that would check the most boxes on the Romaness list, it would most likely be the United States of America. Sure, we could maybe find other examples that would also check some boxes, but checking so many of them? What do you think? Do you think that the US is the spiritual successor of the Roman Empire? Or am I talking complete gibberish here? And if not, which country would you choose? If you like this video, please consider supporting this channel via Patreon or via YouTube membership, because it is your support, dear friends, who make this channel possible. Thank you so much in advance. And of course, I would like to thank everybody who's supporting Majorianus in any form. You guys are absolutely amazing. And if you want to learn more about the Roman army and the problems it caused by being so expensive, you can watch this video in the upper right corner. But if you want to learn if I think that the US will fall like the Roman Empire, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history. Gratias Tibiago and Bene Valete.